We've got some half price garden lights, SPDs, art fault DDs, trade sparky MFTs, bold claims, jack chains, uni frames, and fuse box goods. Ideal snicker track suits from a mush and shepherd's bush. Hello to all of you listening out there in podcast land. It's David Savory and Nick Bundy broadcasting to you on behalf of the Electrician's Guide to Everything. And we're coming to you from the comfort of our inner sanctum, aren't we, Nick? Tell the listeners where we are. Yes, we are indeed, Dave. We're in the Rusty Backbox pub, run by Barry the Bastard Barman. <laughs> a fine establishment. <laughs> and this is where Nick and I like to put away a few after a hard day of screwdriver twiddling and rod tugging. Not together, I hasten to ask. That would be weird. But uh, although I say a few, I mean, uh, I've got a collection of respectable empties standing proudly before me here. But Nick, still nursing the drink you started with. And what? Even is that orange shit you're putting down your throat there? Mate, it's a delicious mango JTO. Uh, does it have to have a bloody cocktail umbrella in it? Uh, yeah. At the start of the evening, I opened a tab with Barry, the bastard barman who runs this place, and I've been piling the Guinness and bar snacks onto it, and you're sat there with the same bottle of J2O and a single packet of prawn cocktail crisps, mate. You're just not following the pub etiquette, I'm afraid. It's the youth of today, mate. Millennials, it, uh, different to your uh, your old age bracket, should we say? <laughs> and and you've been to the toilet twice, which is basically weird, unless you're at least four pints to the good. It's just my young bladder, mate. It's, it's, it's very small. I'm a big person with a small bladder. It's not right, mate. It's not right. It's not a bad boozer, though, is it, Nick? What do you think? Dave, it's a dive. Well, OK, granted, it has its faults. Uh, the carpet sounds like Velcro when you walk on it, and the cigarette burns and the seats take them to before the 2007 smoking ban. But Barry, the bastard barman, does kind of tolerate us, doesn't he, Nick? I mean, it's obvious he doesn't actually like us. You can see that in his scowl and the throbbing temple above his glass eye when you question the cleanliness of his pipes. But I've been drunkenly sick in worse places. I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've woke up in a few doorways in my time. To be fair, it's actually uh, it's quite empty for tonight. It is a bit, isn't it? There's, uh, there's not many people in tonight. It's uh, a bit of a quiet scene. We've got Donald the Drunk propping up the bar as usual. And is it wrong that I aspire to be him? Uh, aspire to be him slash already am him. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not quite there yet. I mean, he, he seemingly hasn't got a care in the world. He just sits at the bar getting his glass refilled every day. How does he afford it? He obviously wasn't an electrician before he became a professional drunk, was he, Nick? Uh, <laughs> you think he was a plumber? Oh, must have been, must have been. He smells like shit, so probably. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about how this podcast came to be, shall we, Nick? Because I'm not actually supposed to be here, am I? This show is supposed to be you and the SS Dan, but Dan was too busy to commit, as I understand it. Yeah, so it's been in the pipeline for a while. Me and Dan were going to be start doing it, but unfortunately, Dan is proper tied on with the amount of work he's got, so we're. Uh, uh, Ricky and Sam have oh, pulled names out of hats and uh, ended up throwing all their names away and uh, and pulled yours out. I'm sure Ricky and Sam phoned around goodness knows how many other people before resorting to me. And they came to me and they said, we'd like you to do a series of podcasts. And I was like, yeah, OK. And then they said it would be with Nick Bundy. And I was like, yeah. And then they said it could be done down the pub. And at that point, the positives outweighed the one massive negative. <laughs> there were. I must admit, I thought Rick and Sam would be supplying the drinks, and uh, I might have turned the gig down had I known we'd have to settle our own bar tab every night. But basically, here I'm fake Dan to the very real Nicholas. <laughs> it is Nicholas, I presume. <laughs> you call me what you want, mate. It's fine. Davo Savo. <laughs> Indeed, so. And, uh, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they want us to talk about. We've we got like a, 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 a show to do. Bloody hell, Nick! You'll never guess who's just pulled into the car park. It's John Ward, top UK electrical YouTuber extraordinaire. Bollocks, is it him? No way. I'm telling you, it's John Ward, the big JW. Over 110,000 subs, that guy, and he's just pulled up right here. I'm totally fanboying, Nick. He's getting out of his van. Is it? Fuck, it looks nothing like JW. A fiver says it is. I mean, it's dark out there, but this is great. He's going to come in and say something like... Hello, I'm JW, and in this public house, I shall tonight be procuring alcoholic beverages for my personal consumption. This is very exciting, Nick. JW himself, in the flesh. He's coming in. Oh, balls. That's not John Ward. It's that James Beck from J Beck Electrical YouTube channel, mate. Oh, shit, no. Oh, God, look away, look away. Don't make eye contact. 
fuck's sake, he's seen us. He's coming over. Hello, chaps. I didn't know this was your watering hole. Mind if I join you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James. It's just that we thought you were someone better. You will have to get around in there, mate. I'm getting a bit low here. What the fuck are you drinking? J2O? Yeah, it's delicious. And a little umbrella on top, please, mate. Fucking umbrella. What about you, David? I'll have another Guinness, thanks, James. Okay. Oh, James, James, James. Make it two Guinnesses. I, I don't want to have to get up again in 20 minutes. <laughs> Do you mean five? James, James, James. What? Back of the pork scratchings as well, please, mate. <laughs> oh, mate, right. Sit right there, gents. Ooh, did you see the look he gave me then? I bet JW wouldn't begrudge me a packet of salted Mr. Porky. Do you remember, Nick, last October, when that James Beck invited us to the NEC for a jolly? I do, I do. Message me out of nowhere. I've got no friends, I've got no mates, my missus doesn't want to come. Do you want to come with me on your day, and take a day off work and come with me uh, Come me to an award ceremony? And Dave that- Savory's coming too. And wasn't it all expenses paid? Free food, free booze, preferential parking, VIP access all areas? I believe that's how he sold it to us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, all promises and... Uh, and it's, to be honest, it sounded like quite a good day to start with. Yeah, yeah. And how much did you pay for those pizzas, Nick? Uh, three pizzas cost me £32. <laughs> and the pizzas were no bigger than my hand. <laughs> And the and the booze was a fiver a pint. Did you get your uh, preferential parking? Oh no no no! I didn't have to park in three car parks away and then walk. And I do believe that every time we sat in a VIP area, some snooty lady would come over and say, "Are you supposed to be in here?" And, and would try and eject us. Yes, in fact. Table <laughs> I've started waving the little VIP lanyards in front of her, and eventually she shut up and go away. <laughs> uh, and did did they actually pay your expenses for travelling? Believe it or not, yes. Better than me, they never paid my fucking train fare fix radio anyway. So, yeah, and did he win the fucking award? No, he didn't. He did. Ricky from EGTE won it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, great. That's, that's the trouble with dealing with that James Beck, though, isn't it? Yeah, they're 100%. All promises, no give. <laughs> oh, shh, sh- mate, 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 he's coming back. He's coming back. Here you go, gents. Very kind, sir. Thank you very much. Do take a seat. Not there. there. Sorry, James, it's just that stool's reserved for old Jack and Nipper, his faithful English sheepdog. He, he sometimes joins us for a half a mile before closing time. Yeah, he's a little bit particular about his stool. Um, you can send this one, though, mate. I see uh, Donald the Drunk was bending your ear at the bar then, James. What was that all about? Yeah, he was telling me about Trade Sparky. Trade Sparky? Trade Sparky. Funnily enough, I just got an order delivered yesterday from TradeSparky.com. And? Yeah, all right, mate. I think it's free delivery if you spend over 50 quid. And next day delivery, if you order before 2pm. Nice, nice. TradeSparky.com, we're taking a look at if you uh, want to buy some electrical wares online. Now, James, old chap, I saw you put a video on the YouTube at the beginning of the year with some rather bad news in it. That's right. I got the van broken into. They didn't actually get into the back of the van, which was good. However... Watching them back on the camera, I could see they were fiddling around with the door lock for a while. And, um, yeah, they just opened the door. And which, yeah. if I didn't have had, they wouldn't have had slam locks on the back doors and I wasn't packed up against a wall, they would have been able to get in the back. And uh, relieve me of all my tools or whatever tools I'd left in there that night. Uh, instead, they just took the dash cam, some cash, and a few other bits and pieces, including a bottle of Coke. Unopened, but it's uh, yeah. It's, I mean, it, you jump into your van in the mornings in the dark in the winter, and it's 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 the last thing you expect. Even though sometimes you usually, ex- sadly these days, expect that kind of stuff. It looked chaotic, and uh, I was saying when the police uh, spoke to me, you know, and stuff. I, I said I couldn't tell you what they'd taken straight away, apart from the dash cam. It was only really when I, I drove off the street and it got a bit more daylight, and I can really had a proper look round. I could see what had been taken. Obviously, the money I was mainly concerned about, but that's uh, that's it. I mean, main, main, major problems of being a sole trader as well. You, you've got to just uh, padlock everything up, secure it, cameras on it, um, alarm. I mean, apart from leaving a tiger in the cab and a lion in the back, I don't know what else to do, you know? So It's shit, though, isn't you know? it? It's, it's, it, it is. Oh, it is. God, it is shit, broken. yeah. Have you ever had yours broken into me? Four times. Four times. Four times. Um, but it, to be fair, I mean, I'm from Stafford, live in Stafford. It's 
quite, it just has its spells. You know what it's like? You see it online, oh, 35 vans have been broken into around the area, blah, blah, blah. My first experience with it all is back when I were when I lived with my mum and dad, they, um, they stole my motorbike. Just past my test, I had a Suzuki VFR 400, which was epic for me. To be fair, looking back at pictures of me sat on it, I was way too tall for it. Um, I was. It was you have stabilizers like a, on the back. Yeah, no, it's like a parachute on top. I, it didn't go very fast because my body just took most of the wind. But yeah, no, I stayed at my uh, what, what it was. My bike was parked. Mom and Dad's house was uh, it was semi detached, but it was detached by a garage. So um, my dad's my bike parked in front of the garage. My dad's van was reversed up to it. And my dad woke up in the morning. I stayed at my mate's house, and he said, "Oh, did you ride your bike to to your mate's house?" I said, "Well, is my van there?" He says, "No." I said, well, no, I went in my van. And uh, he says, oh, someone's pinched your bike. And he looked, and someone had uh, cut the, the, the chain that bolted to the floor, lifted it over my dad's van, uh, over the bonnet, so I didn't reverse it. We drove straight, scratched the front of his bonnet, and stole my bike. And I thought, oh, great, that's that's fantastic. And it was only a couple of weeks later, I stayed at my mate's house in Stafford. And, uh, yeah, back doors, crowbarred open, and my old Vivaro took everything. But luckily, <laughs> luckily for me, Back then, my family was a shithole in the back. I had no organisation. Everything was just dumped in. It was over the weekend. They, they've only ever been done on the weekend. And it's like, like James said, it's only when you start looking and you go, oh, I need to go and use this tool. And you can't find it. And when you eventually go, oh, Christ, they took lots of stuff. Then the next time, I smashed the driver's door lock in my new van with a problem with the Transit Connects at Connects Customs. You smash a screwdriver of some sort into your driver's lock, twist it, and locks the whole van, not just the front cab. Helped himself to update everything. But luckily enough, my tester has been in my van for all four times, and not one person stole it because it doesn't have a plug on it, and it's not a power tool. They don't know what it is, so they don't take it. Yeah. And then the last time I caught, it was uh, middle of last year, did a video on it. Oh, yes, I remember that. You actually caught them in the act, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I left a few details out of what happened between me and the first guy on that video. He got an absolute ploughing, let's be honest. But then his other mate came out with a crowbar and uh, I didn't fancy getting smashed in the face with that. But he never stole anything. He got into the van, but luckily enough, I got caught in time and they soon scarpered. But now I end up putting my locks on my outside of my van. As soon as I leave it, I take my power tools out, tester comes out with me. I just can't run the risk of it. And it's like the next thing, no matter how many locks you put on it, they'll end up cutting a hole in your door That's or bending the, the doors open. Someone really wants to get in there, they're going to get in there. Yeah. No matter what security, unless you've got a, a lion like James says. Have you ever um, had anything broken into vehicle wise, David? Like, you know, a van. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, I know you've had uh, various vans and stuff over the time you've been uh, working, but I mean, I've had, I've experienced a burglary in a vehicle unrelated to the trade I'm in at the moment. And obviously, it, it's, it's the same kind of disheartening feeling you get. Although, I can't imagine. Nick, losing so many tools, especially maybe at the situation I'm at now. Because if they went now, apart from uh, you know the insurance and stuff like that, it's just like start again time, isn't it? It's complete yeah. start again. And some of the stuff that I've got, I'm, and I'm sure everyone else is like this, uh, some of the stuff I've got, I, I haven't bought. It's been handed down or it's been given to me or I've kind of, it's been given to me for a reason that's the reason is even bigger than the actual tool itself so and if that goes it's like that's just kind of irreplaceable i guess and no insurance is going to deal with that so yeah just to bring it around back around to you again david did you did you have any experience with any to date <laughs> no i've uh, not experienced that on any of my bands and i i obviously i um, i do take my primary gear off at night um and obviously you know you, Although you do that, someone could hit you in the day. You could be parked up, nipping into bloody Sainsbury's to grab your lunch or whatever, and someone could do you in the car park. So it's. Oh, no, we have a waitress up here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not where I am. But, you know, it's, it, it's, there's only so much you can protect yourself. And I was getting my um, getting a new key cut over Christmas because my, my old key died. And of course, I've got a transit, which are the easiest things to break into. And the locksmith basically said, look, the best thing you can do. It's not to put slam locks on and, and all that sort of stuff. Just if you take your tools up at night, just leave the thing unlocked. Just let them get into it if they want to get into it, because they're going to do so anyway. And you don't want them damaging your your doors or your locks. Which you know is is one way to look at it. Really, I don't know. I don't keep anything valuable enough in there that I think okay. Well, that's that's a pain. That it's it will, will be a pain if stuff goes. But there's nothing there that I think oh, that's a real kick in the nuts. I know there's so many different ways to look at it, isn't it? Like. 
this is what the reason I had. So the, the last time I got broken into, I thought, I have to put these massive locks on the outside. I have to protect my stuff. And then as soon as I put it on there, I looked and I thought, well, it's not going to stop because a, a, a van up the road for me, someone cut a square in the top of his roof, climbed That's in his trouble. van. They'll, they'll do the peel and steel, won't they? Yeah. If you, if you make it too hard to, to get in. And, and uh, I don't know. It's, there's, there's no easy way around it, is there? It's just a shit situation. And you just want to catch the little bastards in the act and break their kneecaps. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, uh, as satisfying as that would be to uh, to to deal with the actual thing, uh, and you'd probably deal with it a lot quicker than any police or anything. But uh, I mean, the other extreme is something that happened to uh, another lad I know, and he woke up in the mo- in the morning and he, his van was gone completely, never to be seen again. And he had all his tools in it, uh, another lad's tools in it locks all over it and everything it was just it was a transit i forget what what registration plate what year or anything it was but it was a ford transit gone never ever seen again and it was that, like that is the yeah that, that's the biggest ul- ultimate i mean it doesn't I, I mean to me the old school 1990s crook lock through the steering wheel or whatever is like the best deterrent like i just said about you know just said about having a wild animal in the cab i think having a crook lock through the steering wheel is a physical deterrent that says You'll have to mess around and really punch and fight me to to steer me off this driveway or off the road or whatever. Uh, and then after that, again, going back to the 1990s, 1980s, a, a, an alarm that just sings and sings, you know. So it's like all the technology they've got nowadays, they can just do this cloning stuff. They can get a magic key or whatever it's called and they just get in. And uh, again, if it wasn't for um, the kind of slam locks or deadlocks that I've got and the fact that I back up to a wall, then yeah... It, who knows where the uh, where my tools would have been, or what was remaining of my tools that I'd left in the van would have got to. You actually had CCTV of them, or your neighbour did, is that right? I, well, my camera didn't see that side of the van, but the, the neighbours did, and they could see not only did they, did they come, I mean, how gollum is this? They came up to the, I've, the, the lights in the front of the house were quite bright, so you didn't necessarily need the uh, infrared or anything that's going on with it when the, when the camera's going to infrared when it's dark. As he came up the drive, the uh, next door's uh, floodlight came on, lit up the guard, his garden, and um, yeah, I, I can see from from the neighbour's camera that he's just kind of stood at my door for what, like 10, 20 seconds in, in, about 30 seconds inside the van, and then just ran off and, and shut. The, the main thing is shut the door behind him and like slam the door shut, kind of just shut it, just and, and off. Wearing all black, wearing. I mean, I, when I watched it, I was trying to look to see what they'd taken. Because um, I didn't get the footage for about another 24 hours. The neighbour didn't realise anything had happened. I had to knock on and find out. And I said, listen, I don't know if your camera's picked anything up. He then, it was a few hours later, he got back to me and said, yeah, I've got this. But we were both looking and we couldn't see anything. It was all in black, gloves, the whole thing. And I, like, even if you look at my door lock, it never. it's not like the old Ford where you just razz it to death, like you say, Nick, with a screwdriver and it's open. It's just look, It looks as if they've used my key and... Well, they obviously haven't because that staff still got it. Yeah, I, this, it's, I know exactly. I mean, I had CCTV footage of me doing it, but not only did I, it was the last time I caught them, but I also, someone put something on my local, so it's like spotted Stafford saying, everyone be careful. A few vans were broken into last night, and one was in Nelson Way, which is the road next to mine. And I thought, oh, I'll have a look at that CCTV. Lo and behold, half past four in the morning, three guys got out of a Fiat Punto, reversed it all the way down my drive. Two lads got out, walked around my van, saw my massive locks, got back in their car and drove off. And I thought, and I'd never have known that had happened unless someone had put it on Facebook. And I saw it, but it's the same what you said. It doesn't matter if you've got CCTV of them. When I went out there and had a, a what for with this guy before, I couldn't even tell you what race he was. I couldn't see his skin. He had motorbike gloves on, balaclava on, his hood up, full black Nike tracksuit, it, it, like... Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you if he was 50 or 12, black or white. And it was just like, no matter if you've got CCTV of them, if you can't see their face or you go and get fingerprints if they're wearing gloves, it's absolutely pointless. And that's the biggest thing. I spoke to a policewoman who lives locally to me, and she says that's the worst thing about it. She says you can get all the footage you want in the world of all HD of them stealing on your stuff. It's great to show someone. But it doesn't get your stuff back. It won't catch them unless you've got the trackers or some form of way of following your tools. And it's, 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 it's pointless. And maybe that's another reason why no one wants to break into my van because I've got a load of Ryobi gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, cash converters would be paying them to get out of the shop. <laughs> this is it, this is it. Sorry, chaps, but where's the gents? It's just over there, mate. Uh, follow the bar around. Right to the fruit machine, James. Dave, you know we're going to be stuck with him all evening. So naughty. We could always duck out for a couple of jars down at the four-inch fan hole. <laughs> it's not the gay bar. Look, you're drinking a J2O with a fucking umbrella. And Yeah, what's your point? It's just... Oh, sh- 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 he's coming back, he's coming back. Awfully quick. Do you suppose he washed his hands? <laughs> Sorry about that. I had a really watery pot noodle today, and now my piss smells like chicken noodle. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> I... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, what poster they got up in the urinals uh, next to the circus afterwards, mate? There's a CP fuse box poster up there. Good things, good things. Uh, which one of you two have fitted one? I've fit one. I've fitted several. Well, yeah, I've fit several, yeah. I see you've worn a nice little beanie hat in a few of your Instagram video, YouTube videos. <laughs> I think they, yeah, pink, we're pretty much... Pink, isn't it? Yeah. Pink one, yeah, pink. I asked for pink and got a pink, and then I asked for a grey and didn't get a grey, but... Anywho, they sent me a shirt and a few other bits and pieces. On, uh, I'm sh- Where did you ask them to, to get these these goodies? Because I didn't get shit out of them. Um, where, did, where did I ask? Do you know what? I don't even know at the moment. Oh, they did a competition or something Instagram. on Instagram. Yeah. I don't think you know what that is, David. But uh, yeah, if you go on there, you can win stuff. Nick will tell you all about winning things. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. Not bad stuff, though, is it, CP Fuse Box? No, I like. I really like them. I, I say I fitted... Ooh. Over 10 of them now. Um, and the, the, the difference I like is obviously the price. If Before YouTube, it would have been a split load board purely down to cost. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't fit an RCBO board and justify it to a customer. Oh, it's going to cost you realistically another 100 quid if I went with the other brands to have an RCBO board. So it would stick to split load. But now the fact that you can you know, get it at an affordable price with an SPD included, uh, you know, 18th edition metal, metal board, all in. It, it just makes sense. And they're nice and neat. I like doing my fusibles neat, you know, pulling it all around and then you get all the accessories like the uh, tails clamp, your tails glands, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I highly rate them. Well, this is it. And with the, the, the surge protection as well, the price point of it is just amazing, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And like you say, future proofing as well for at some point when that actually becomes an amendment and we have to start doing it. You know, yeah, we've still, been doing I, it for a couple of years, sort of thing. I'm sticking in the SPDs by default now. I don't even ask the customers whether they want it or not because it's such a low cost with the fuse box gear. You may as well just include it, and you know that you're giving them a better installation and that they're probably not going to see quite so many electronic equipment failures because that's a trouble with surge. Is you, you don't know how effective an SPD is. You just you you find that your LED lamps or your electronic equipment fails and you just think oh that's just gone to bollocks you chuck it in the bin and you, you go and buy a new one but hopefully with spds going in there should be less e-waste shall we say as electronic devices are protected but so uh, i think some of the um the bigger brands some of the known brands they're, they're just pricing themselves out of it with with spds they're just you want to put in some of these traditional boards you've been fitting the costs are horrendous I noticed that um, we had um, we had a couple of uh, clients that usually use uh, a, a, another brand, should we say? And when I brought this upon them, I, I hadn't actually installed one yet, and I'd seen I'd seen them flying about uh, various uh, wholesalers and social media, and I, I went and gave uh, gave it a go, and they I was impressed, they were impressed. The price is is great, the quality I found as well. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't, you know what, it, it's, I didn't find any problem with it whatsoever. It, it fit perfectly. If it's mounted onto a flat surface and, um, you, 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 you know, you, you terminate everything properly and it's fine. And, and I was really impressed with it. So like you said about the surge protection, mandatory or not mandatory, it's kind of for what, for the price, what it is, you're going to fit one of these boards anyway, because the, um, you know, the, don't ask the question. It's going to come with an SPD in there and it's good to go. Yeah, and on top of that as well, I've uh, heard in the pipeline that they're bringing out the mini RCBOs March time as well. So not only do you got enough space in there anyway to do, like I do, nice and neat, what you can do. But then with the mini RCBOs on top, it's, it's going to make things even easier. Yeah, I, I found as well, I had a, a customer just before Christmas, they, they'd done they had an extension done and whatever. They'd had various bits of electrical work done and um, by me. And then when I came to look at the board, it was in a tiny little uh, cupboard. 
and um, I just took a few measurements and yeah I just the, 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 I think I got a, a 10 way board in there and it was nice and compact I didn't have to start demolishing anything and getting here um, anything move, moving meters and stuff like that the 10 way board fit in perfectly RCBO surge protection yeah well, there this you, is go. A, you can put in an SPD and RCBO solution and it's it's just really cost effective isn't it and and it's you know you're giving the, the client a better safer uh, more future-proof robust solution yeah and especially as well um take t- take into consideration the slight tiny extra cost for type a rcbos so it's it's nothing really as well I, i'm sticking type a in as standard now because you know that type a c you're gonna get they're here to stay aren't they they're going to be here to stay it's yeah, just a, a lot of countries of now. type a c you can't that germany for example doesn't have type a c so it's only a matter of time before some amendment comes along and says type a c are out and then all of a sudden if you're not already fitting them You've got a lot of installations that are no longer as compliant as they, they could be at this stage. And, of course, that just means a lot of rogues doing EICRs will go, oh, well, we're, we're giving this a C2 because it's got the wrong type of RCDs in it. Because people will always take advantage of changes in the regulations to mark down older installations as being non-compliant. It's a boring, boring subject, isn't it? <laughs> so, tell us a cock joke. Uh, <coughs> why did the why did the young lad fall out the tree? Don't know. Because someone threw a fridge at him. <laughs> That's the uh, the joke my nine year old lad told me today. Brilliant. I missed the punchline there, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> that went down well. It's a good job you're actually with us, James, because otherwise it would just be me and Nick. I bet Dave's got loads of jokes. I, you know, I can never remember jokes. Perhaps if it were what if they were written in the wine regulations, they might stick or something. That's the only thing I seem to do actually fucking remember. Fucking really. okay, no. hell. Yeah. No, it's about right. To... So where we're, we're, the last thing we spoke about was CP Fuse Box. With CP Fuse Box, I don't know about you guys, but the way I heard about them was on Twitter. They got uh, I was seeing a lot of people on Twitter saying that it was quality stuff. That's where I thought, well, you know, I need to need to look into this and try it for myself. What about you guys? Where did you find it? So this is the difference between you and me. I'm a, uh, you're, you, you're a Twitter guy. I'm an Instagram. I saw it was all over Instagram for me. And to be fair, actually, one of the first times I saw one being fitted was you, Dave. Uh, sure uh, uh, yeah, the, I, I put one in last June or something, an installation where I needed a big board, sort of 20-odd ways, RCBO board. Uh, I, think, I think it had surge protection as well. But um, I know that the equivalent cost using another brand would have been like a couple hundred quid more and I was like yeah mm, it's going to be a tough sale but yes yeah, so they are they do seem to be taking social media by storm um you're not you, you are on twitter aren't you uh, Nick, but you just don't use it anymore. yeah I'm on twitter I just uh, I I'm born and bred up on facebook <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah yeah I know what you two old guys can say uh, born and bred on facebook would well, myspace back in the day actually classic myspace <laughs> wow did you yeah, make music yeah. on MySpace or something? No, <laughs> I had uh, long, longer hair back then. Um, yeah. But yeah, MySpace oh. and Facebook opened up. And then I only joined it. I had an Instagram account for my personal, but I never really used it. It was just pointless to me. But then I, obviously, when I started YouTube with you guys, I set up an Instagram account to bounce off it. So it sort of worked hand in hand. And then I got roped into Twitter pretty much from you, Dave, okay. going, oh, I don't have Instagram, but I have Twitter. And there's me going, well, I have Instagram, but not Twitter. So that's where that spurred from. So so just on that point there. So, David, you're not on Facebook? No, I, I was for a brief time. I never liked Facebook. I joined it belatedly, personally, in 2011. Uh, right. I, 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 it just infuriates me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, <laughs> I can... I don't think, I mean, I know what you say, Nick, I understand why, why you would think that, but I don't think it's an age thing. I think, I mean, I know I know there's a lot of young young kids, late teens or whatever, and they just avoid it like the plague. I mean, I got on it pretty much as soon as it turned up to, to, to you know, all of us in 2007, I think, 2008, and I did about 10 years on it, and then I bailed. I, probably, I think I came out, I don't know, three years ago or something like that, and it was... Um, I, I, I just didn't like certain parts of it. It was a bit crazy. People getting a bit kind of, um, I don't know. I, I know you can customize it and stuff like that and take friends off and all the rest of it, but it got a bit kind of 
getting text messages to go and like something because if you don't, you'll it's been all this. It's got crazy, and I was always uh, again with Twitter and, and Instagram. I was kind of I'd get on there first and then see how it goes and stuff. But in for in, in terms of business, I think, or at least the, the what I'm doing at the moment, uh, in, in Instagram and Twitter seem to be like side by side. Instagram mm-hmm. is the, obviously um, you know you're posting pictures up there. You're going to talk about what you see. You're going to talk about situations you come across and then obviously everyone can dive into that and and have another conversation about it or you know kind of talk about what they've experienced as well and it's quite easy to bounce that as you as you probably know to over to facebook and and again over to twitter and then that happens a lot that happens if you want daily you know 10 times a day but at least regular enough to see um what everyone's up to and stuff like that and i'm sure we're all seeing similar kind of uh woes when it comes to the electrical industry especially and uh, uh, problems well you, may, you might be at least i, I know i yeah, see quite a lot I suppose of, the trouble with social things. media is that there's a lot of negative stuff on there isn't there and it can really yeah. drag you down you have to sort of <laughs> try not to look too hard at what everyone's screaming and moaning about because it'll just drive you back in the wall but uh, I, I quite like to, I quite, what i like about twitter is that what i used to like about twitter was the sort of the fire and forget you could just sort of blasted out there and it didn't really matter if anybody looked at it or not uh, that's bang on what you're saying about dropping a tweet and leaving it and then occasionally sometimes you can um you can put a meaningful tweet in there and no one gives a flying donkey you know what i mean yeah. so it's like yeah it's it's just uh, there is that kind of side of things where you can you can be involved with um different people that you get involved with every day but then in general i think you just got to treat social media uh, with a pinch of salt, with a kind of, it's not. It, although it can be, it's someone else's real life. It's you can't be, you can't give it too much attention uh, when people, when you when you read or you see something a bit upsetting or anything, you can't just jump on it straight away. It's just, I don't know, life. It's not just life's too short. It's just, it's a case of, you know, get on with it. Don't worry yourself with stuff like that. I know, I, say the wrong thing as well, of course. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people when we were growing up was. Uh, was the whole likes thing. If their video or picture didn't get 100 likes, yeah. it was removed yeah. and it was the worst thing in the world. And you just think, or then it was the thing that was spread around of, there's a picture of a, a poor orphan boy, oh, please like and share to get him fresh water. Oh, oh give me a break. That wouldn't, that's not real, but people fall for it. That's the kind uh, of crap that made me want to come off Facebook because you, you just get too many people with time on their hands who just constantly put this bilge out and you, I, I can't be asked to filter through it. Yeah. Yeah, or, or, or even, or even, or even people close to home, who would then, like I said before, they would, they would say to you, "Have you seen my picture? Or have you seen my holiday snaps or my video?" Or the, yeah, I saw them. Well, I didn't see you like or you comment, uh, and I yeah. saw them, and I didn't feel the need to like it. You know, I, I do like it, but I'm not going to click like just because it's telling me to click like. It's like what are you doing? I'm c- collecting likes. You know, is that where we are now? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, yeah but... it's it's the social ranking now, isn't it? Have you ever watched uh, the TV program on Netflix, Black Mirror? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. You know which one I'm on about. Same thing, yeah. So the episode on Black Mirror. And uh, this episode was based on a woman. So they had social media, but in the future of their own type. And if you, you had a ranking system, so if you were to put a picture up of your morning coffee, you would expect to get lots of likes and you would expect other people to like your stuff and then you would once you've got a certain amount of likes you become obviously popular on that net, that platform that would then allow you to then purchase this sort of luxury home but if you're not got to that ranking yet you are you're not allowed you in the poverty area should we say um, and it was all through your social side online of the amount of likes and followers you've got the amount of things you actually have in real life and it's it, that sort of stuff you can see that actually happening yeah it is it unfortunately and um... yeah I recall in that episode as well that the the lady who was trying to up her social status, um, one of the problems she had was she was getting lots of likes, but they were from people who society deemed to be low quality. So they were your people who worked in, um, it was like when she bought a coffee, the barista would give her a, a like, but the weight of his like was low compared to someone who had a, uh, a higher social status liking her stuff so not only was it a case of gathering likes but it was a case of gathering quality of likes but yeah it's you, you, and the, as you say you, you can see you can see it going that way can't you yeah definitely definitely i mean 
e- even if you just think about in, in, a, in a tiny, tiny bubble of friends, maybe even some family, when it's like, it's like you've known these people all your life or you went to school with them and everything, and yet the way they interact with you on, on, the, on the social media uh, uh, situation is completely different and, and it can just, I don't know, it can, it can affect you maybe on your, on your, uh, in your real world or your real world relationship with them. But uh, yeah, I mean, just bring it, bring it back around to uh, what we're doing on social media and stuff. So like with, with, so you're, you're, you are on Facebook, Nick, and you are on Instagram and you are on Twitter and you are on YouTube and you are on MySpace and you are on, <sighs> I'm a social, LinkedIn, social media. And you player, are on everything. Yeah. Social media. Right? Yeah. I'm on I'm Facebook personally and then Facebook business, which I know you probably, I know Dave's not on Facebook business. Are you Jamie? You got a nope. Facebook business page, so I get the sense of I've had a few people locally to me where you would just get the odd arsehole that would give you a negative. Top. I've got one negative comment. Customer wasn't. I rank him, agreed a quote. We never agreed a time. He is an old guy. He then forgot all about it. Gave me Nick never turned up. I can't respond. To, I can respond to him privately. I can't get it off my page. It's like the only negative comment I've ever had. But like you say with Google, you can have all these people just spam you with stuff. And you can't justify it or get rid of it. It's there for good now, and it, it taints your reputation. So I've looked in the sense of getting rid of Facebook as well because I don't get any work from it in the sense of meaningful jobs, good jobs that can lead on to other stuff. It's all for, oh, I need an electrician in my local area. Someone will tag me in it, and it's someone that wants me to change a downlight for £4 or go and change an extractor fan, and they expect it for free. And it's just it's it's small remedial jobs that, people want done for nothing so they're better off asking for a diy job to come and say help them out rather than a qualified electrician and not pay the full price yeah so you, you is that are you talking business facebook there it's it's just, it's, like... yeah business yeah so i i don't really get tagged in personal stuff uh so yeah. bought four electricians they would tag my business page like friends and family trying to help me out trying to be good um but most of the time it just ends up being a waste of time or just a pain in the ass that doesn't that doesn't equivalent to my time like worth my time going um because people just want stuff for free or for nothing i think people on that platform do sort of see it as a community and they expect you to react like you're providing some kind of community support sometimes yeah. as opposed to you saying well no i'm actually this is a business i'm running here and yeah if i'm not earning money doing the job if you're not going to pay me the what i want to to do the job then that's money i could be earning elsewhere why should i or should I come and take care of your pissy little job for next to nothing? One thing I have noticed, um, especially since starting up um, putting content on YouTube, and then, like like you were saying, merging it with uh, maybe Instagram and Twitter, and then promoting it through those, um, I get, you get, and and it's it's nice. You get obviously you get all the ne- nice negative things and people telling you about things. They they, they message you personally and they're telling you about what impact that particular video, that particular upload had on them and how it helped them and stuff. And that—that that is, that, to, to be honest, that's that's worth it on its own, just that yeah. going through all the, the, the process of uh, recording stuff and editing and things like that. That's very, well, I, I think that's very rewarding. And yeah. But also, I don't know if this is how often you guys come across this, but I, I, I've, I, I come across some woman... Um, she, I, I, I'm not going to read a name. I've not even got a name, but I'm not going to read a name out or anything. But she, she kind of messaged me through through Instagram, and she was in a wholesalers, and she just starts messaging me, just just talking as if I. And I think because I replied pretty quick, I replied within a minute. I must have had my phone in my hand or something, and she asked she asked a very easy, basic question, and I just gave her an answer straight back. And it started a conversation. It was like. I mean, the wholesalers now, what do you think of these lights and this lights and what, how, to, how to wire this up and this, that and the other, sending me pictures. And I was like, whoa, that's a bit. Uh, so I just kind of gave her the old deaf ear and just stopped talking kind of thing. Because I, I don't, you know, I'm not sat here waiting, waiting for people to message me. I'm just, you know, it's, it's, it's a strange scenario to be in, I guess. But um, again, it can merge into when you get a comment uh on YouTube and you, you, you reply and it gets a bit either heated or it gets a bit kind of controversial. It can go on and on and on and on. And you just think, Whoa, what's this? And I guess that's just, I don't know. <laughs> the, the joys, is, the ups yeah. and downs of, of, of uh, interacting with people. Yeah. We've always, we, we've all had it where everyone else knows best. There's always someone else that knows better than you. And no matter how many times you can try and argue with it, 
I just I just most of the time I just give them deaf ear because it's just pointless arguing with people that think they know better. They'll always have an answer or a reason to come back at you for. You just think, fine. And there's not a lot of people jump on board with and say, you do a video and someone starts attacking you. Where's your video, mate? Where's your YouTube channel? You think your work's that good? Where's your video to prove to the world that you're better than the rest of us? And when you do that, then you can comment shit stuff on our videos. Yeah, there, there are a couple of people um, who I've noticed crop up in the time and again in the comments. I've actually got a handful of people that I've blocked from commenting on my channel, which I don't like to do because I like everyone to be able to have their say. But if they're just going to be sticking the boot in without any anything behind it, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're just chatting shit for the sake of it, then they can jolly well bugger off. Yeah, politely. <laughs> Well right. said. Anyway, guys, on another note, who's that chap in the corner selling stuff out of a suitcase? The guy in the corner, that's Jimmy. Jimmy the thief. Um, he get, he got loads of quality gear. He, uh, I think he lifts it from a wholesaler's van. I'm not sure which one it is, though. You know, I had a look earlier, and he's selling Ideal Industries products today. He's, uh, he's doing a nice little number on the, uh, the comprehensive lockout kit that Ideal have out at present, so uh, it might be worth you two gents having a peek before kicking out time. It's a, it's a cock-on lockout kit. James, didn't you do a, you did a video on it, didn't you? Ideal maintenance free junction boxes? Oh, yes. I did, yeah. I did a video. Uh, I put it on the channel. Um, and really good stuff. Uh, I had the insure box, uh, the maintenance free uh, connections and stuff. And we, I, did, I did some cables uh, going to be thrown inside the floor and the floor is going to be covered up. Um, because yeah, I know you, that you, uh, you you like your junction boxes and the floors, don't you, James? <laughs> <laughs> we, love, we, love, we, <laughs> we love to use junction boxes. I think that's why they approached me and they thought, we need to have a, a chat with this guy and get him to use some maintenance free boxes. And what better to use than Ideal's insure box. Uh, but yeah, I'll use them. Uh, they're really good, really good. I, I, no problem with them. Yeah, really easy to use. Uh, again, going to going back to the the, the uh, what the, the the lockout kit. I've got that as well and use that a lot. Um, and the kit itself, um, the little bag it comes in. You get so many different bits of uh, types of MCB lockouts for various all the different kind of um, MCBs there are and isolators and stuff uh, that, that are in the industry. And it's it's great. It's a nice and tidy little kit that you keep. Keep it in your tool bag. It's that small. And, you uh, mentioned yeah. that you've got the idea lockout kit because when I was looking in uh, Jimmy the Thief suitcase earlier, I did see one with Jay Beck written on it. So I don't know if you have got one anymore, actually, mate. You might want to take your van out because uh, <laughs> you may have been hit again. I'm afraid. Right. Let me chuck some questions here. So with the ideal stuff, have you got? Are they just the push fit connectors? Do they do up from one mil, two five, four, six mil, that sort of thing? Yeah, that's right. One mil, uh, two point five, and yeah, four, six. They've got various different size push fit connectors. They do the lever connectors as well, don't they? I've got some of their lever connectors. Yeah, yeah, they've got the lever connectors, same ampage, I think, same rating. They've got uh, also the inline ones as well. One end in the other side, and one end in the other side, and that's it done. And uh, obviously, all the conductors covered. And it's uh, yeah, it's a great way of. Uh, extending or messing about if you've got any nonsense you've got to move your older cable or anything like that and you can uh, just add on to it that's quite a new product for them the insure box i i first saw it at alex in coventry last september that was the first time they had them there and i was speaking to them on the ideal stand and i think they're saying this is this is a new product so uh, i bought a few of them it's, it's all right isn't it? it's good stuff yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I used them on the downlights, and it, it's just—it's really fast. It's really good. It's, <laughs> the best, the best, the best thing about it is the fact—the fact how quick they are. Two cables in, one cable out, that kind of thing. Link the downlight together, clip it in through the through the hole. Away you go. All Do done. Any of you, you still use crimp connectors? I used them on Friday, and that was purely the fact I uh, I left my other toolbox at home with all my stuff in. That's the only reason I used them, and I had about five left. The only crimp connectors I use now are the um, uh, uh, terminals, when you like, uh, like the, the hook and eye sort of things, where you where you want to put, put a screw. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, uh, the the butt slice connectors. Yeah. I, when I started the business years ago, I bought loads of them, and I've still got them, <laughs> and I never use them because uh, they they they're just why you don't need the faff anymore, do you? When you've got things like the the splice lines, the ideal stuff. No, no, the technology's moved on further. I remember when I when I first started out, I was working with an old spark, and he was, 
I, I had some the, the crimp type, and he I saw some lying around, and I was he's like he's looking at me, he's like, what are you messing around with that stuff for? I said, well, I've got to connect this up. And he said, there's nothing better. To, and he was like in his 60s or something. He's like, there's nothing better than a solid mechanical connection, meaning like a screw or something or a bolt or something holding it together. And, um, yeah, I kind of uh, I think of him when, when the technology's moved on a lot now since uh, we've got these kind of pushing connectors that, uh, with ideal and everything and, and the way that the maintenance-free version, uh, what he would think about that, but... What, 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 what were we talking about before? I'll talk about anything you want. Butt plugs. As long, well, as long as it, yeah, as long as it's we could talk about butt plugs. Yeah. What's okay. your experience? I have zero experience with butt plugs. Oh. Just spit in a fist. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave that in, Dave. What was, what was your, you know, in about three years' time, when you when you subscribe and start dipping, oh, yeah. put this fucking YouTube, this unedited. Three years, my numbers are going down already, mate. <laughs> but I do have you on audio saying I've got zero experience with butt plugs, which I think <laughs> is going to be my new ringtone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in the edit. <laughs> I, I wonder. I wonder. I was going to touch on this before when we were talking about social media. I wonder if the fact, forget about me, but if the fact that you're not too big on Facebook, Dave. Why, David? Rather, why you're not? Uh, why your subscribers? Are, like, if you if you were on Facebook, would you have? Would you keep going going? Because you've got like another another uh, avenue to pursue or whatever. Uh, well, unlike old Nicholas here, I, I'm not a, a subs chaser. I'll just oh. I don't care if people are watching and no one's paying me to do it, and I'll say what I want in a unsavoury fashion. If I uh, right, okay, I think yeah. I did that. I like the idea of being able to put out a video where there's usually some something in there, some message, some point, something that someone can take away from it if they're prepared to to sit through all the dreadfulness that accompanies it. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Nick have sit there and go, oh, the bad language and the the shit jokes and all that kind of stuff we've got to put up with. And he's got vomit down his t-shirt on this one. <laughs> yeah, we're black. Yeah, eye. That's fine. There's a point to it there if you sit if you sit through it if you're prepared yeah. to sit through it. But you got to put up with that. <laughs> I, I I watched um, I watched one or two, and uh, on the TV at home, and I was like, you know, cause is this <laughs> is going to be okay to put on the TV? Hilarious, hilarious. It, it, it's only a matter of time. I think Google um, or YouTube kick me off or demonetize me or say, now we we don't want your kind here anymore, which is why I've started copying everything over to L B R Y. Yeah. Presumably you pronounce that library, I'm not even sure. It makes me stick out. It's one of the videos I remember when I first started watching it is when you're working on your setup in your office and you've got your can of beer and you touch it on the buzz bar. Um, and then someone's comment was like, Oh, David, that was such poor acting. No, like, it was. It, I actually wet myself watching it, but then wet myself more at the comments of people going, Oh, well, that wasn't very clever. Like, it's just they've just missed the whole point of the video. Like, it's just. Oh, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stage stuff there, and it's like when I pretended to fuck over a builder's toolbox once by pouring a load of cement into it. Some guy yeah. uh, left a comment quite recently saying, that was an absolute bastard thing to do. I hope he fucking does over your van, you wanker. I'm like, Just calm down, mate. It's a fucking stunt, obviously. It's not real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the, end, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you can't turn up and say, follow everything I do, don't deviate watch everything everything i do is to be copied and mimicked it's it's it's, it's uh yeah i mean it's, it's it's an entertaining creative thing to do and god jesus you look the fucking comments people give mental mm. there are some choice ones aren't there <laughs> all right guys i need to go and drain out some more pot noodle water i'll be back in a minute oh mate sod this let's just sneak out and finish the night off down the uh the plumber's retreat is a gay bar but you know what i'm up for it and while we're at it We'll stick that to James Beck with the bloody bar tab and some of what we lost at the NEC. Oi, Barry! We're off. Our mate said he'd settle the tab when he comes out the pisser. Come on, Nick Ariel, what the hell are you fucking around with that cocktail umbrella for? Let's go. Thanks to all you podcasters for tuning in. Sorry we've got to wrap it up here. Listen out for episode two. Come on, he'll be shaking the drips off by now and I'm sure he doesn't wash his hands. <laughs> Excuse me, did you see where my friends went? No, mate, they fucked off.
and you owe me 37 quid for their tab. Um, there must be some mistake. Um, so you best pay up. Cash, card, or your fucking teeth. I don't give a fuck. Oh, those bastards. <laughs>